All right, so to get started with creating an ad for lead generating purposes, I wanna start in designs. So knowing that our ad today that we're gonna create is with Keller Mortgage, designs has a whole bunch of content that you can use for your ad. So, and this will take just a quick, a quick minute before we actually jump into campaign. So to do so, we'll come over to designs over here on the left, and that'll put us here in our design templates. And we wanna start a new one. So down here in the bottom right hand corner, we'll click on the plus sign. And we are going to select social because we wanna create a, a social post. So select post social next. And this will open up the designs template. And in here, we have all the different um, types of content, you know, base over here for app listing buyers lead gen all these all of these images uh, and design setup that you can already use that all you have to do is update a little bit of information so take advantage of those so today we want to focus on buyers so we'll come over to buyers and then keller mortgage and you can see here we have four different options for an instagram ad and four different options for a facebook ad I'm going to recommend that you select Instagram. It's going to be a square image and that will render properly on both Facebook and Instagram. So I'm going to go ahead and um, use the Instagram post. So I'll just click on the click use. And so now, now all of the design capabilities open up. However, for this ad, we don't really need anything um, because there isn't any listings involved, so we don't need to add um, any additional uh, phone numbers for the office or logos. And with Facebook and Instagram ads, less than 20% of the image can be text. So we really don't want to add too much information on here since we already have your dream home is waiting. So once I'm done with that, I'll just open it up. I will click done. which should save, I don't want to download. Of course now, nothing's happening. All right, so let's try file. Let me just refresh this real fast. Use. because then I'll be able to show you once I hit save, this will save in our templates. There we go, perfect. So now it is saved in our templates. So when we go to create our ad, we don't even have to download anything. We can just pull it directly in from our templates. All right, so now that we've created our design, good to go, let's head into campaigns, which will be over here on the left and will be the megaphone icon. So click on that. And this will drop you into your campaigns dashboard, which will give, give you an overview of all the activity you've had across your paid, email, direct mail, and social posts. So what we wanna do is come up here to create a new campaign. And we are going to select paid ad, pay our social ad paid, because this is gonna be different than a social post. Like we don't want just a piece of organic content we want to do a paid sponsored post, so we'll select paid. And with everything in command, they set it up so it's really simple. You just follow the, the guide, the instructions, and start from the top and work our way to the bottom. So for here, for our campaign name, I'm just gonna enter in Keller Mortgage Lead Gen. And I always like to give dates to things. It just helps me keep track of it. So. Keller Mortgage Lead Gen 5.7. And then what is our goal? Our goal here is to attract buyers. So with a Keller Mortgage offer, we can say, hey, you can get you know $1,000 off closing costs, save on origination fees. So that's really gonna be uh, speaking more to a buyer. So let's select attract buyers. Scrolling down, where will the campaign run? We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as our options. I'm not a big Twitter user, 
Um, so I don't ever use Twitter, but knowing that this is going to be a visually heavy image or paid ad, Facebook and Instagram are going to be the best destinations for this ad to run. So select both. And as I mentioned yesterday on our team meeting, I always recommend selecting both Facebook and Instagram because Facebook owns both platforms and it will optimize delivery to the platform that's performing best. So our goal here is going to be lead generation. So Facebook will optimize our ad to the people that are going to be more likely to click on our ad and fill out the lead generation form. So if Instagram doesn't deliver and isn't getting any leads, Facebook will automatically start putting more money into delivering that ad on Facebook. So once we've selected Facebook and Instagram, we'll click set up campaign. All right. So we, like I mentioned earlier, it's command to set this up. So we just kind of follow the instructions to go step by step uh, and fill in the information. Up here at the top, we have our name and goal, which is Keller Mortgage, the Gen 57 and attract buyers. So we don't need to make any changes there. The next is no listing selected. Since we're not advertising a listing, we don't need to um, select one. But if you were going to run an ad for a listing that you have, or maybe run an ad for a listing for another agent, you can easily select that listing to pull in all of the images and copy from the FMLS listing. So we'll just continue down to our ad text. So select fit configure here. And this is going to give us the option to put in our copy, headline, and description. So I have um, already saved some copy that I took from a Nick Baldwin ad from Commander Conversion. So let me grab that really quickly. So let me just copy paste. So this came directly from an ad that he ran. The Keller Mortgage Zero Plus Loan has zero lender and origination fees plus $1,000 towards third party cost on loans over 150,000. See if you qualify below and save some cash. Now he also included some fun emojis and every bit of data and research shows that emojis work really well for social ads. I don't know why, but I think it does speak to um, your personality. Uh, it speaks to adding a little bit of emotion to what could otherwise be a pretty boring ad about mortgages. So um, let's add some, some emojis. So the ones that he used, and again, this is directly from what Nick Baldwin did. He added some little pointy fingers to point down. Um, so it'll point over here. You can see the preview. It'll point down to the image. He also included the home. And then the, I think he started the copy with the home emoji as well. I mean, you could, you could even come over here and in the zero, I mean, you can just search for, let's see. You could put, well, let me copy, cut that there. Like you could put just fun emojis like that in, um, and, there, and it just kind of helps grab attention. Uh, play around with it and figure out which emojis work well for you, which ones you like. And I always recommend that when you're creating an ad, that you make sure that it is in your tone of voice. Um, so that way, as, as, as someone clicks on it and they're like, oh, I see that this is from, from Nick. This is how he speaks and this is kind of how it would be to work with him. So we've put in our main copy here and that auto populates over here on the right you can see how that is going to be the copy that's going to be at the top. Now we want to add our headline. So let me grab that really fast. All right, so get $1,000 back at closing dot, 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 really. And you can see that auto populates over here on the right hand side down here in the bold letters. And now we need to enter our description. 
and this is pretty simple, find out more about zero plus. So the zero plus mortgage option. And you can see how all of it looks over here with all of our copy. And like I said, this is all from Nick Baldwin. This is not any original ad copy that I've written. I'm not a great copywriter, but I think that he did a great job in writing concise copy that really highlights the benefits of Keller Mortgage of why a buyer would be interested in it, especially given everything that's going on with COVID-19 and, and buyers wanting to save as much money as possible. I think this ad in this copy speaks to uh, a unique proposition that Keller Mortgage will be able to save a buyer a lot of money versus a potential traditional mortgage lender. So once we've added our copy, everything looks good, we can click save add text. And that'll put us into our next section, which will be add media. So click configure here. All right, so we just created that image in designs. So to get to that image, click on select media for this campaign. And then we'll select add images and then we'll choose from design. So it says browse design library, click on that. And then click on the image you wanna use. So I selected the image that I had just saved uh, and this is pulling it in. So now you can see it pulls in the image. It gives me the option um, to, I guess you could have multiple images here if you wanted to. And we have our square image of 1080 by 1080. So preview and crop image. So you'll see here it has this, this rectangle in the cropping the image. Come up here to the drop down menu where it says wide and select square. And this you can see it says best for most placements. So this will run across Facebook and Instagram and show the full image so we'll click save image and you can see it pre-populates or updates the preview over here. So once we are good with that, select save add media. All right, so now our next um, step is to configure our ad channels, which are gonna be the Facebook and Instagram ads. So collect select configure here. Now you will have had to add your uh, Facebook business page. You've had to connect to that in your settings. So for me, I'll come over here and I will select my page. So Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. Perfect. So you can see it updates my pre the preview of the image. Here's the image that I have there and the name Nicholas Core Real Estate Group sponsored. And since we selected Instagram as one of the platforms to deliver this ad, it's going to give us an Instagram ad position. So do we want it to be a traditional Instagram ad in the feed or in an Instagram story? And you can change depending on what works well for you. I know people that love Instagram stories. You can run there. I always just prefer to have it in um, the traditional timeline. Next is going to be the destination. So we'll want to set a destination of where this ad will take somebody. So we want to capture as many leads as possible. So we want to select the use Facebook lead generation form. So with the first time you select that, you will get a pop-up window in a new browser. So make sure that your pop-up blocker isn't on. That's going to have some terms and service, uh, for you to review and agree to, to allow Facebook to use this lead generation form. I have, I have two business pages because I created a new one um, and it made me agree to those terms and service for both Facebook pages. So if you have two, it may give you this, it may have that same pop-up multiple times until you agree to it for both pages. So select use lead generation form and then we have a button call to action label. Right now it says learn more, sign up, apply now. So you, 
I'm just going to leave it on learn more because I don't want someone that clicks on it to think that this is going to take them directly to a mortgage application because that may be a little worrisome, but you know, Hey, it's great to learn more about what mortgage, uh, what Keller mortgage has to offer. So let's keep on learn more. But we still need to include a follow up destination URL because once they fill out that lead generation form on Facebook, they need to go somewhere and we want to send them to a place to learn more about Keller Mortgage and maybe even apply. As a Keller Williams agent, we each have our own unique Keller Mortgage URL. So to get there and how to get that URL, and I will share this. Um, let me share this URL with you right now. So it's portal.kellermortgage.com. Let me share this in the chat window right now. All right. So I just shared that, um, shared the link in your, in the chat window. So you should be able to click on that. It'll take you to this cool little portal for Keller Mortgage that it has a lot of information and you can set up uh, your account here. What you'll want to do is come down on the home page, come down to my KM settings. And right here at the top, it says my personal KM link. So click copy. And this is, if someone clicks on this, it's going to take them to a branded Keller mortgage link uh, that has all of your information as well as all the information about uh, Keller Mortgage. So if they fill out that application or they learn more, they've already linked to you as an agent. So now that I've copied that link, I'll come back over here into my campaign setup and I will paste that URL right here in this follow-up destination. Any questions on getting that link for Keller Mortgage? All right, perfect. So now that we have set up our lead generation form, as well as that follow-up destination URL, let's set up our ad targeting. And we will want to use custom targeting, custom settings, so make sure that toggle is on. And we have two options here. We have target my database and target a custom audience. We can select both, you can select one or the other. To me, I would recommend that we only select target a custom audience because you'll want to maybe have a slightly different message if you're gonna target your database. So if you're gonna target people that are in your sphere, it may, you may wanna have a little bit more of a personalized message since they know you, you're already friends on Facebook, um, you've interacted with them. So I would say for today, I would focus on targeting a custom audience so we can try to add new leads outside of your current sphere. So to do that, select target a custom audience and then we'll do select a location. So let's select Atlanta and we'll do Atlanta and we can do a 20 mile radius. So you wanna make sure that the ge geographic area is pretty large. Now, if you cover a specific part of town, let's say you, you mainly work in Roswell, it should pull up um, some different areas. All right, so you can see here we have Seton on the river uh, in Georgia. I don't know why it doesn't have actual Roswell, Georgia, but you could select Seton on the river, which is located in Roswell. Uh, and do a 20 mile radius around that. So you'd get part of the more of the Northern Atlanta suburbs. But I'm just going to select Atlanta for today. Perfect. Keep that 20 mile radius. If you could do smaller, um, I would recommend that you don't go any smaller than a 10 mile radius because you want to make sure that there are enough people within that geographic area that are going to be interested in your Keller Mortgage ad and 
are going to click on it to fill out the information. So now let's add some of our expert targeting here. So click on add or change interests. So first and foremost, the two targeting um, parameters I'm always gonna recommend you add is Zillow, because this is going to add if someone is, has been clicking around on Zillow or interested in real estate, as well as realtor.com. Perfect. So, but since this is a, 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 an ad for a mortgage loan, let's add some mortgage targeting parameters here. So just type in mortgage. All right, so let's select mortgage loans and mortgage calculator. Oops. And if you roll over them, as you, you can see the different audience size, interest and descriptions. So for mortgage loans, there's 155 million potential audience members for that. And mortgage brokers are only 3.7 million, so that's a lot smaller, so maybe we don't select that. And then mortgage calculator is 2.5. So I think between mortgage calculator and mortgage loans, I think we should be good to go. So down at the bottom, it fills in and shows us all of the interests that we have selected. So we have Zillow, Realtor.com, mortgage loans, and mortgage calculator. So we will save selection. And if you wanted to add any additional interest on there, you could. Um, I recommend that you don't add too many. You would think that, oh, if I, add, if I start adding more targeting parameters, it's going to be really hyper-selective in who this ad gets delivered to, which is true, but it does also limit your pool size, and you wanna make sure that you have enough people to get those leads. And as we mentioned yesterday from the, the learnings from Jessica and Nick, this is really a volume play. So we wanna make sure that we're getting as many leads as possible. So ideally, we wanna get 100 leads from this ad in the hopes that then from that, we get 20 really good leads. And then from there, we can get you know five prospects of potential buyer brokerage agreements for the next couple months. So that's why I recommend don't add too many uh, targeting parameters on here. So once we are good with our parameters, let's select save Facebook and Instagram ads. Perfect, all right. So our last bit is going to be our duration and budget. So let's select on that so we can um, update that information. So we'll select a start date so today's the seventh. It's gonna auto populate to the eighth. You can start it, set it to run today or tomorrow. It's not gonna make a huge difference. That being said, it usually, I think Facebook asks for up to 24 hours to review your ad and make sure that it abides by all of their standards. So I would just recommend that it starts tomorrow and it's gonna to default to 10 days. I think that is fine. So you can just leave it at 10 days, but you could run it for just a week if you wanted to. So let's say another ad you may run would be an open house. So if you want to run that from you know Monday to Sunday, you would just want, want to run it for seven days. But you could extend it. You could run this for the entire month of May if you chose to. That being said, the longer that you run this, the more you want to increase your budget. And as we talked about yesterday, if you have not run a ad through command, Keller Williams International will give you $25 back on any ad spend of $75 or more. So the way that works is that you would add, make your total budget be $75. And then when you go to check out, you'll actually only be charged for $50. And then on top of that, if you're able to show that you closed a piece of business from a lead that you generated from this ad or from an ad lead generating ad on Facebook through command, First Atlanta will pay you $50 at closing 
for that. So theoretically, you could get this whole ad for free. So I saw I had a question, so let me check that really quickly. Uh, there's a question is, can we split that amount between two campaigns? The $25? So no, it's going to be, well, you're just gonna get a credit for $25. So however you spend um, the 70, I think you're probably just going to have to select $75 for a single campaign budget and then you'll get back $25. And I wouldn't, I, then I would recommend that you just set up another campaign for a different ad. So no, I don't think you, you would be able to split it over two campaigns. But I can get some more information on that for you. Let me write a note. All right. So, um, what they, what Jessica and Nick talked about in their video yesterday or the other day was she spent a hundred dollars per campaign. So I'm going to update this to a hundred dollars per campaign. And right now you can see that's going to be a daily per channel spend of $5 per channel. So it'll be $5 on Facebook and $5 on Instagram. Right now we have it selected to distribute evenly across both channels. But as I had mentioned earlier, we want this to auto optimize. We want Facebook to deliver our ad in the placement and on the platform that is going to deliver the most number of leads. So let's change this from di di distribute evenly across both channels to use automatic placements for Instagram and Facebook ad. And if you roll over here, you can roll over that information. It says Facebook uses their ag algorithm to intelligently spend your money based on audience and performance set your budget and allow Facebook to optimize your spend to gather impressions. So it will automatically just default to $5. So it'll split evenly between those two placements and then we'll optimize towards the better performing platform. So I recommend use automatic placements for Facebook, Instagram ads. So once we are good with all that information, click save duration and budget. So we are almost done with our ad. Um, a couple things I wanna show you first. So over here on the right hand side, you can see we have a preview. At the top here, we have um, a drop down menu. So it shows right now Facebook preview web feed. We can click on the drop down to see what it looks like mobile version as well as an Instagram ad. So this is what it will look like on Instagram, as well as an Instagram story. So Instagram story with the copy doesn't really show up. So like I said, probably not the best place to use it. Also, what you want to do here is since I wanna recommend everyone is compliant, you can take a screenshot of this ad and send this to Lynn and Alita for review and approval before we submit and start running ads. So once everything has been, you've double checked everything, all the copy looks good, the image looks good, we set up our targeting and our spend, you'd click publish campaign. I'm gonna hit save as draft right now. Let's go, I don't wanna publish this personally, so yes. So once you hit publish campaign, it'll send that to Facebook to, to review and make sure that um, it abides by all of the regulations, that the image is less than 20% text, that the copy isn't misleading, and that the click-throughs go to actual web pages and go to the pages that are relevant to that ad. So once you have your ad running, you will get notifications through your Kelly app that you have received a new lead. So if you're on your phone, you should get a ding, say new lead within your Kelly app, so then you can follow up with them. If you come into your campaigns tab here, you'll see leads captured. And if you click on this icon here, a new window will pop up and will take you to your contacts page. 
and then you can filter by leads only. And then hit apply, and then all of your new leads will show up here. And you sh it'll show you the where they came from. So it'll say it came from Facebook, came from Instagram as well. All right, so we've set up our campaign. We are running our campaign. I showed you how to uh, add or to double check your leads. So once you get them, so now let's say you've, you've received your leads, you followed up with them, let's set up a smart plan or see what smart plans they have that we can start to add those leads to, to build that nurture. Because so much of what Jessica and Nick were talking about yesterday was, all right, some of these buyers that you're going to get, if not most of them, are probably gonna be interested in, in buying in the next couple months, maybe not right away. So you wanna nurture that relationship, build that relationship with them and stay top of mind. So once they get to the point where they are ready to buy, they have their pre-qualification, they're good to go with Keller Mortgage, you are the agent they talk to. So let's set them up on a smart plan. So to do that, click over here on smart plans. And let's just do a quick review of uh, the smart plans that have already been created for us. So in our library, we have 10 smart plans and I'm not gonna go through each one, um, but ones that may be the most relevant that have already been created for us is an eight by eight plan here. So and if you click on the view steps, the drop down will show up of all of the uh, actions and activities for that smart plan. So we have the eight by eight. We also have the midterm and long-term nurture plans. So this is going to be, um, the midterm is gonna be people that are thinking of buying the next probably three to four months. Long-term is probably gonna be six to eight months. Uh, and just those regular steps of uh, keeping in touch with them with emails, calls, and text messages. But, all right, let's say for us, A, these don't really fit exactly what we wanna do and kind of how I wanna run my business. Let's create our own smart plan. So clicking back into smart plans, over here in the top right-hand corner, we have the create button and let's create our own smart plan. So let's do, uh, we'll name this Keller Mortgage Facebook Lead Follow-up. apply. So I'm getting this message at the top that says Twilio account not connected. So I don't have a Twilio account. Twilio is the service uh, that will automatically send out text messages for you. It does cost money. Uh, I think it's like 0 0.0075 cents per text message. So it's pretty cheap um, and it can be really, really great to help automate. Uh, if your, te your text messages, especially if you are setting up a lot of people on a smart plan. That being said, it also doesn't use your cell phone number. If you sign up and you, you can get a free number, which I think will show as an Austin, Texas number, and then you can pay $1 a month to purchase a local Atlanta number. Just keep that in mind too, that if you start adding people that are part of your sphere that already have that already have your phone number in their phone and they start receiving text messages from you from another, another number, it may be kind of confusing. And you also wanna make sure that in your text messages, you include your name and Keller Williams First Atlanta so they know who the text message is coming from. All right. So before we get started on creating our smart plan, let's do a quick review of the tips and rules for building a smart plan because there are some rules that we need to follow to make sure um, we are abiding by KW standards. So click here and we'll have a quick how to plan smarter. So create a task. So a task is gonna be either, you know, phone call, text messages, um, or email. And it says allow two tasks per day per smart plan, but delays must be added between those steps. So as we start adding new actions and tasks, you can only add two per day because we wanna make sure that this is manageable. The idea is that we have a lot of people on these smart plans 
to really build and nurture that relationship. And we don't want to add too many activities that we have to do each day that's going to be overwhelming us and going to cut into our otherwise you know, lead gen time and follow up time. So send text messages requires at least one day delay between scheduled text messages. Same thing with emails requires at least one day delay between scheduled emails. And the reason for that is we don't want to bombard our sphere or these leads with message after message after message. We want to make sure that we are providing value always coming from a place of contribution. So we want the system requires that there's at least one day between an email and a text message. And that also means there's one day if, if you send a text message on a Monday, the system isn't going to allow you to send any other message until Tuesday, whether it's a text, call, or email. So setting delays. So in between each one of those actions, there's a delay and it cannot be less than one day. So there has to be at least 24 hours between those messages being sent out. When smart plans were first rolled out, there were some issues with text messages and emails going out at four in the morning. They have fixed that. So now text messages only go out between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on that day. So you don't have to worry about sending out a bunch of text messages automatically at 1045 at night and waking up and irritating your sphere. So for delay, it requires at least one action between delays. So you can't do delay of three days and, and another another delay of five days without there being an action between those two. Otherwise, you would just set a delay of eight days. And the total smart plan duration cannot exceed 90 days. So the idea is that once you, this smart plan can only be for three months, at which point you should have nurtured that, that relationship into a buyer brokerage agreement or a listing or set them up on a different smart plan. So you can add them automatically into another smart plan that'll do more of a long-term nurture. So add a smart plan allowed once a day per smart plan. Delays must be added between steps and cannot add more than one version of a canned smart plan. So we cannot add someone to an eight by eight campaign twice because then they'll start getting the same messages more than once. Do in cannot exceed 14 days. So some of the actions and tasks that you can add will be to set someone up to set, potentially set the, a reminder to add them, add their neighborhood information or set a task to call them or text them. And you can give yourself a certain number of days to do that activity within. It cannot exceed 14 days. The idea is we wanna set reminders so when you log into command every morning, it says, oh, I need to call XYZ leads today, but let's say you don't have enough time to finish all of them in that day, it allows you give yourself permission two or three days to finish those calls. But you don't wanna drag that out over two weeks because then you're likely not going to finish that task. Restart flow. So this is only available for smart plans that are at least 14 days in length. So the idea is let's say if someone's on a smart plan, that is a month long or three months long, you could theoretically just start it over for them and keep them in the same smart plan. But you gotta be mindful of that because you don't want to just repeat the same text messages and emails to them and then be like, what, I already got this message from you. And the restart action must be the last action in the flow. So you can't restart the smart plan halfway through and still have some additional steps in the smart plan. And then some overall um, guidelines for smart plans is touches cannot exceed seven touches within seven days. So only once a day cannot touch someone more than 12 times within 30 days or more than 15 times in a total smart plan. So that's in that 90 day time period. So these are the parameters that you can set your smart plans up for. So now that we know kind of the rules of the game, let's start to set the smart plan up. And as you can see at the top here, right now it says one day, zero steps, zero touches. So as we start to add different tasks, it will um, update this information here. So let's start with an email address. So we should be receiving an email uh, contact information. So we'll start with the email. So to select that, just click on it 
and it will automatically populate. It, we have currently right now the simple email type selected, so that's gonna be our text-based email. We do have some HTML email templates available, but for an automated or created smart plan, we, those templates don't fit, so don't select those. I spend more time walking through those during the TCO2 training. So for our subject here, uh, you know, you can put whatever you whatever you want. So um, still interested in Keller Mortgage. So um, you can make your subject whatever you want. Again, I always make sure, want to recommend that you put this in the same tone of voice that you use. So here is our email. And you can just type in you know, whatever text-based email you want. Hi. And then over here, um, you see this little message, this little F period, and these are called merge fields. And from here, you can, there's a drop down, and you can select to have um, the person's first name added in there. So this is going to be a great way that you can personalize your message. So even though this email is going to be sent out to a ton of leads that you get through Facebook, to that lead, it'll seem like you sent a personalized message. So you can add, hi, first name, um, and just write a quick email. Um, I saw you uh, were interested in Keller Mortgages. zero plus loan option. Are you still looking to buy soon? What parts of town are you interested in? Then add your signature here because our plans do not automatically add your signatures, so you'll want to include that in every single one of your emails. So there is our email, that's gonna be our first step. And then in between each step, we have to add a delay. So to do that, we'll click set delay. So added that, so we'll just scroll down. And let's set, we can set, you know, two days or three days. So we'll, you know, we'll send an email and then three days later, let's send a text message. So I clicked on text or send SMS. So that will add down here at the bottom. Now, if you have your Twilio account set up, you can send this text message out. Um, but because I don't have it up, it'll, you know, send as a task, as set up as a task. So same way here, you can say, a, and then you have your merge field, so you can add your contact first name in here. Um, I wanted to quickly check in and see what questions you have about Keller Mortgage. Now, I'm just making this up as I go along, so don't necessarily follow um, all of this copy, but I'm happy to work with you if you want to set up um, set up a smart plan similar to this to make sure that all the language is uh, how, how you would speak and work with your clients. Um, and what information can I provide about the zero plus loan option that can save you at least $1,000 on closing costs? And then for your text message, um, include your name here. And then I always like to include Keller Williams first in Atlanta so they know, or at least put Keller Williams um, because this isn't our phone number. So we'll want them to know where the text message is coming from. Otherwise, it's gonna be like zero plus loans, Keller mortgage, what does that mean? So the next step will be to add another delay. So we'll set another delay here. We're gonna see this one at one day and then we'll add another task. Actually, 
I said that I just clicked on SMS, but I don't want to do it. Let's do a phone call. So let's delete that real fast. So we'll remove that step. Scroll back up the top and let's make a call. So I just clicked on make a call, scroll back down. So here, so task name. So this is what's going to show up as a task when I log into command and it will say call so and so. So call and then I can add in these merge fields here so that way I know um, who to call and their phone number. Now, one thing that's kind of funky about smart plans um, and they make a call task is that when you're trying to set up the task name and you add these merge fields, the merge fields at go in in reverse order. So if you want to set up a call here, I recommend that you add their phone number first, then contact last name, and then contact first name. And now you can see it reads properly of call, contact first name, last name, phone number. And it's important that you have this information in your task. Um, so that way when you log in, you can just see all the information that you need in command. So it's like, all right, perfect. You don't have to go into a contact card or anything. And then task description, call. Again, we'll just put first name, oh, that was it. select contact first name contact last name, contact phone number, and ask about their plans for buying. Perfect, and then do in, so this is where I'm saying you can select up to 14 days to have your tasks due in. I would give yourself, you know, maybe three days, depending on the number of leads that you get, it may take a minute. So this is the process of creating that smart plan. So we've just created that phone call. We could add another step. So we'd want to set a delay. Down here, set, oh, we don't want three days. So we'll set another delay of four days. And you can just continue to build this as long as you want and just create as many, you know, create a task here, make a call, email, add a smart plan. So let's say we've created this smart plan that lasts for, you know, a couple of months. Um, and we want to add them directly into another smart plan. This way you can keep that nurture, that relationship going with them. But since they didn't respond maybe to Keller Mortgage, maybe we can add them into the monthly neighborhood nurture plan based on the part of town they're in um, or information that you gathered from them. So we can come over here click add to smart plan. So scroll down and it will have a list of smart plans that we can add them to. So it's not populating for me here um, because I don't have any that are active, but you should be able to add them to um, the quarterly call plan or the long-term nurture. It's probably going to be your best bet to remind you to call uh, and reach out email over the next couple months as that person prepares to buy. So once we've set all of that up, so we have our, our personalized Keller Mortgage Smart Plan. You can see it here at the top, this lasts for nine days. It has seven steps and three touches. If you wanna start adding people directly to it from within here, you can click on the add button. Let me hit save and continue. So it's not gonna let me save because I have this field at the bottom to add a smart plan. So I am just gonna delete this right here. Just remove that step. So now it should let me save. Perfect. So I can add names in here. So I can just start searching for names. Perfect or tags. So this is a great opportunity that as you start getting leads in here, you may want to start setting up tags for, you can create a Keller mortgage tag. Sorry, let me come back over here. Um, you can't search for tags. So you can just scroll down and you can have a, a Keller mortgage tag. That would be really easy for you to add them into the, the smart plan. So I've hit save, everything's good to go. We've added some contacts. Now it'll populate here into my people plan. Let me just hit refresh because sometimes it takes a second to show. 
So here we go. So we have our Keller Mortgage Facebook lead smart plan here. It has, it'll have a list of all the contacts that are in there, the duration of nine days, total touches. And then over here on the right, we have some action. So here we can add a contact. So that same pop-up window to add contacts either by name or by tag. We have the option here to copy this. So let's say you create a smart plan um, that you like, but you don't want to have to rebuild a whole new one that has just a little bit different content. So maybe this is for Keller Mortgage, but you want to create one for Keller Covered. So for the ins homeowner's insurance, you can copy this, go through, update all the copies to say Keller Covered instead of Keller Mortgage, and you'll be good to go. You have the option to edit it. So if you click edit, it'll take you back into that screen that we were just in a couple minutes ago to um, make any changes to any of the copy, if you want to add any additional steps to it, and then delete. The last thing I want to show you really quickly is if you go into your contacts, there's another way that you can start adding your leads to it. So um, if you start adding, go to filters, you can select leads only. Now for me, I'm not going to have anyone that shows up. So I'll just show here. Um, I don't have any leads. So let me, let me just clear this, but clear all apply. Uh, I'll just search for myself really quickly. So here is myself. So what you can do here is you can select, let's say if you have all of your leads, you can come up here and do select bulk action, add to smart plan, and then you can come over here and select your Keller Mortgage Smart Plan right there. Boom, and that'll add all of your leads that you've just added to your Smart Plan. Or if you want, you can go in to each lead individually, come to Smart Plan over here, and you click Add to Smart Plan, and the same way, select the Keller, Willie, Keller Mortgage Facebook Lead Smart Plan. So we just walked through how to create a smart plan. Any questions about setting up your lead generation Facebook campaign and then following up with a specialized smart plan to nurture that relationship? Any questions? That was a lot of information that I just ran through in an hour. What questions can I answer for you? All right. So as you guys are playing around and creating your campaigns, let me know what questions you have. I'm here to help. I highly I recommend highly you take advantage. Is there a question? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, is this recorded? Because I would love to see it again. <laughs> yes. So I did record it. Um, so I'm going to post it on the YouTube channel. Uh, later today and then on Friday afternoons I send out a link on um, the email with the links for all the videos of the trainings for the past week um, but I, awesome. I highly recommend that you guys take advantage of this offer for First Atlanta to pay that $50 difference um, if you can show that you get a, a closing from from the lead that you can get for, through command there's so many options and capabilities that you have I'm happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one with any of you to go through and build your campaign for you, talk through copy, talk through images. You, you can use listings. If you don't have a listing, talk to another agent in the office. I'm, I'm sure they would be happy to let you advertise their listing. Keller Mortgage, Keller Offers, um, even just some, some broad buyer-based um, pieces of content. Let me know how I can help you. I wanna make sure that you can leverage all this technology. And as we try to figure out what are our new ways of lead generating in the midst of COVID-19 and as we start to um, make those social changes moving forward, you know, use this as a great way to start to fill, fill your funnel with leads. Well, you all, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Let me know how I can help and I will speak with you all soon. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much.